This is Harsh Rules, I'm Ben Harsh, and today we're going to learn to play Advanced Squad Leader Starter Kit Number 3. Advanced Squad Leader Starter Kit Number 3 was designed by Ken Dunn and released in 2005 by Multiman Publishing. This game supports two players, and each scenario takes about two hours to play. Before we begin this episode, I'd like to recognize the Harsh Rules Patreon supporters that help make content like this possible. If you'd like to support the channel, head over to patreon.com slash harsh rules to learn more. And once again, thank you for your support. Welcome back to the Harsh Rules Breakdown for Advanced Squad Leader Starter Kit Number 3. In this episode, we're going to continue to learn about vehicles in regards to combat. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get started. Last episode, we discussed turret basics in relation to vehicle facing. Let's now discuss turrets in greater detail. A big advantage of turrets over changing a vehicle's covered arc is that the turret covered arc may change free of cost with each movement point expended during the movement phase. In this way, turrets can easily be repositioned while moving. When responding in combat, the turret covered arc may also be changed without movement point expenditure, but instead receive a DRM penalty to their to hit dice roll. To fully understand this DRM penalty, we first need to understand the various turret types. Armored fighting vehicle counters often will be bordered with a symbol that indicates their turret type and the speed of its traversal. An AFV counter bordered by a circle is a fast traverse turret and is abbreviated as just T. If bordered by a thin square, it's a slow traverse turret or ST for short. A thick square is a restricted slow traverse turret abbreviated as RST. Please note, when referencing the to hit dice roll modifier table for RST turrets, they are treated as ST turrets. The exception here is that an RST turret cannot fire its main armament or coaxial machine guns while the AFV is crew exposed. Another turret type that doesn't appear in starter kit number 3 but will later show up in starter kit number 4 is a counter bordered by a thick square with no corners. This is a single man turret, also known as a 1MT for short. The status of a turret, whether the crew is buttoned up or exposed, as well as the turret's facing, is managed by the double sided turret counter. Each side gives the armored fighting vehicle specific abilities in the game. Finally, for the sake of completeness, an AFV counter with no border is considered non turreted or NT for short. The main armament of a non-turreted vehicle is bow-mounted. This means the player must turn the entire vehicle in order to aim. Also, because this vehicle does not have a turret, a special counter is included to track whether the crew is exposed. Now, a turret's traversal speed impacts its ability in the to-hit process with DRMs covered under Case 8 on the to-hit dice roll modifiers table. Keep in mind, the following DRMs are doubled if the fire is in a woods or building hex. To be clear, these DRMs apply if a turret needs to traverse to fire on a target, and the DRM incurred is based on the number of hex spines the turret must traverse to bring a target within its covered arc. NT, or non-turreted vehicle's main armament, is bow-mounted and must basically change their vehicle's covered arc and incur a plus 3 DRM for the first hex spine and a plus 1 DRM for each additional hex spine after that. ST or slow traverse turrets incur a plus 2 DRM for the first hex spine and a plus 1 DRM for each additional hex spine after that. Please note that this listing also includes RST or restricted slow traverse turrets and 1MT for single man turrets as well. Finally, a 360 degree mount, which is for ordnance, or T for fast traverse turrets, incur a plus one for each hex spine change. Now that we've covered turret types and how they function in combat, let's move on to an AFV's armament.
In this section, we're going to review the main armament of an armored fighting vehicle and learn the process flow for attacking another AFV with it. In order to complete an attack on an AFV requires the player to navigate several tables. Let's cover these at a high level so you'll have a sense where we're at in the process as we talk through it. The first table is called the to hit chart. An attacking player will map their AFV's main armament and target type here to learn the to hit number they need to roll against to score a hit. If that dice roll is successful and they secure a hit, next they will re reference the to kill table associated with the ammunition type they used. There are several to kill tables to get familiar with. There is a table for armor piercing, high explosive anti-tank, also known as heat ammunition, and high explosive and flamethrower attacks. The purpose here is to identify a to kill number that players will subtract the target's armor factor from and then roll against to determine if they received a kill. Then that final effect dice result is evaluated for an outcome on the AFV destruction table. This will tell you whether the AFV is eliminated or immobilized or if the crew is shocked or stunned. As you can see, there's quite a few steps in this process, but now that you know the general outline for taking a shot at an enemy AFV with the main armament of a friendly AFV, let's go into this process in greater detail. Let's discuss an armored fighting vehicle's armament. First, each vehicle has its main armament, which is a gun identified by the large numbers and letters in the lower left-hand corner of the counter. The numbers refer to the gun's caliber, which is the internal diameter of the gun's barrel. And the symbology following this is the gun's length and velocity. An asterisk indicates a short barrel with low velocity. No symbology equals a normal barrel. An L equals a long barrel with high velocity. And a double L is very long barrel with very high velocity. Basically, the longer the barrel, the more force expanding gas can impart on the shell, and thus achieve a higher velocity. When attempting to hit a target, this main armament is mapped to the to hit chart. This revised version of the to hit chart, included with starter kit number three, covers all three target types. Infantry target type, area target type, and vehicle target type. When one AFV attacks another AFV with its main armament, you use the vehicle target type, which is what we will be reviewing first in this section. Finally, it's important to note that the dice result that determines if a player scores a hit is also evaluated to indicate whether the shot hit the AFV in the turret or the hull. If the white die result is greater than the red die result, then the turret is hit. However, if the red die result is greater than the white die result, then the hull is hit. If both dice are equal, this is a tie and the hull is hit. We'll cover this again in an example later in this episode, but it's a key outcome that will be used when determining whether the tank or the crew is affected by an attack. There are several ammunition types to use with armored fighting vehicles. And... Each target type has a default ammunition. High explosive for infantry target type and area target type, and armor piercing for vehicle target type. If an armored fighting vehicle has special ammunition, it will be called out on the back of the counter. These are heavily abbreviated to fit, so you'll need to learn how to interpret the symbols. For example, A equals armor piercing composite rigid, or APCR for short. The A is followed by a number, which is its depletion number. And sometimes following this are specific years that the ammo can be used from. Also keep in mind, some ammunition cannot be used with certain target types, and some can be used but are less effective. You'll also notice that some AFVs are equipped with other types of ammunition, such as smoke, white phosphorus, and illuminating rounds used in full ASL. These abbreviated symbols for the Panzer 6E follows a similar format. S is for smoke, 
N in this case is for Navertiti Gunswaffe. If you couldn't tell by its name, the Navertiti Gunswaffe is a German smoke discharger mounted inside the turret so it could be reloaded from the inside during combat and protected by the turret's armor. The 7 that follows this is a depletion number, and the superscript means this depletion number is in effect in 1944. There is then a depletion number of 8, which is available in 1945, indicated by the 5 superscript. Similar to ordnance, to use special ammunition, a player must declare they are making an attempt to fire it prior to their to hit dice roll. If their original dice roll is below the depletion number, then it's available, they resolve any hit from that dice roll and may try for that ammo again. If the dice roll is at the depletion number, they're allowed to take one shot only, and may not try for that ammo again. A dice roll above the depletion number means they never had the special ammo, and the gun is not fired, meaning they need to re-roll with default ammunition. If the die roll is 12, the weapon fired and malfunctioned. They're out of special ammo, and you need to record that the special ammo has been depleted. Once a hit is scored on a vehicle, either using a light anti-tank weapon to hit table or using the vehicle target type, it is resolved on the applicable to kill table. There are three different to kill tables organized by ammunition type. First is the armor piercing to kill table. This table is used for all forms of armor piercing ammunition, including armor piercing composite rigid, abbreviated as APCR, and armor piercing discarding sabot, or APDS for short. This table cross references the weapon type and range to provide the to kill number. The second to kill table is for high explosive anti-tank, more commonly known as heat. This heat to kill table assigns a to kill number strictly based on the gun size or support weapon type. Third and finally, we have the high explosive and flame to kill table. This table also uses gun size and support weapon type, whether that be a demolition charge or a flamethrower, to assign a to kill number. Using these tables, you can then complete the to kill procedure. In the first step, you determine your kill number, then you add any to kill modifiers. In certain situations, these modifiers will increase the to kill number. There are two of these found at the bottom of the AP to kill table. The first will add a plus one to the to kill number for a rear facing hit. If a critical hit is scored, it will multiply the to kill number by 2, but this is not applicable for machine guns. After that, the armor factor will be identified from the to hit process, and you will subtract this from the to kill number. Finally, the attacking player will roll two dice and resolve the result with the AFV destruction table, which we're going to look at next. The first column of the AFV destruction table compares the final effects dice roll versus the final to kill number. There are also outcomes for infantry fire table results for infantry attacks on vehicles, but we will focus on how those work in a future episode of this series. For now, let's concentrate on vehicle versus vehicle combat. This would also cover gun versus vehicle combat as well. Now, the remaining columns in this table specify which of the previous tables was used to generate the final to kill number. There is direct fire, area target type, demolition charge, flamethrower, machine gun, and close combat. We will cover direct fire in this episode. Starting with the first result under final effects dice roll, if the final effects dice roll is less than the final to kill number, then the vehicle is eliminated. This is regardless of a hit to the turret or a hit to the hull. Next, if the final effects dice roll equals the final to kill number, then if the hit was scored on the AFV's hull, then the AFV is immobilized. If the hit was scored on the AFV's turret, then the crew is shocked. The row following that is for high explosives. If the final effects dice roll is one greater than the final to kill number and the AFV's hull was hit, 
then the AFV is immobilized. If the turret was hit, then the crew is shocked. Finally, with non-high explosive ammunition, which also includes heat ammo, if the final effects dice roll is one greater than the final to kill number, then there is a possibility that the AFV crew is shocked. Basically, the AFV crew must pass a normal morale check to see if they are shocked or not. Now, while we're here at the AFV destruction table, let's also discuss some of the outcomes that will require markers. Similar to guns, AFVs have a crew that operates them. However, you don't usually show the crew counter with AFVs. With that said, you might want to keep a counter handy as you may need to make morale checks in combat and need to see the crew morale for that nationality. The crew of a shocked AFV is incapable of any action. If they are crew exposed, they immediately button up. A shocked AFV may not move even to pivot or change turret covered arc, interdict or attack, even in close combat. With a shocked crew, no movement point expenditure is needed to bring the AFV to a halt. Now, to remove a shock marker, at the end of the next rally phase, the AFV must make a single die roll for recuperation. On a die result of 1 to 2, the crew is okay, and the shock counter is removed. On a die result of 3 to 6, the shock counter is flipped over to its unconfirmed kill, or UK side. An AFV under a UK counter is still shocked and must make a single die roll for recuperation in the next rally phase. On a die result 1 to 3, the UK counter is removed. On a 4 to 6, the AFV is flipped over to its wreck side. Next, let's talk about the two different stun counters. The first stun counter, the word stun is in all lowercase, and the second stun counter, stun is in all caps. If an AFV has their crew exposed and fails a morale check, other than for possible shock, or if a machine gun final to kill dice roll equals the final to kill number, the crew is stunned, and the AFV is marked with a stun counter, the one where stun is in all lowercase letters. A stunned AFV immediately becomes buttoned up and may not regain crew exposed status until able to do so in a subsequent player turn. A stunned AFV may not fire, even in close combat, move, including covered arc changes, or expend movement points for any reason during the remainder of the player turn, and immediately stops, although no stop movement points are spent if moving or in motion. At the end of the player turn in which the stun was placed, Flip the stun counter to its plus one side. This indicates the AFV is no longer stunned, but must add a plus one to any to hit, machine gun, infantry fire equivalency, close combat, or morale check dice roll. The plus one counter remains with the AFV for the rest of the scenario. An AFV that suffers a second stun result is recalled. A single man turret AFV that has been stunned is automatically recalled and may not become crew exposed for the remainder of its time on board. Recall also occurs when a crew exposed AFV suffers a K or a KIA result on the infantry fire table or rolls an original 12 on a morale check, other than for possible shock. Place a stun counter where the word STUN is in all caps on the AFV which is recalled. This is treated the same as the lowercase STUN counter except that at the end of the player turn, the all caps STUN counter is flipped over to its recall plus one side, and that AFV must attempt to exit the playing area along a friendly board edge. The edge either which the player entered on, or was allowed to set up in front of with no enemy units between. The AFV exit the board edge by way of the shortest route in movement points using motion status as fast as possible. If an AFV's main armament suffers permanent breakdown, the AFV is recalled but not stunned. Also note that victory points are not awarded for recall. Next, let's take what we've learned here and work our way through an example from the rulebook.
This next example is a two-parter. We're going to begin with vehicle movement and a smoke dispenser usage example. It's June 1943, and the Panzer 3N in hex C6 begins its movement phase by spending one movement point to start. It then spends its second movement point to enter hex C5. Its next movement point is spin to change its vehicle covered arc and its turret covered arc to the hex bind between D4 and D5. Then spends half a movement point to use the road and drive into D4. Then spends another movement point to enter E5. After that, it spends one movement point to enter F4 where it attempts to fire its smoke discharger at a cost of one movement point. This requires a dice roll less than or equal to its usage number of 7. The German player rolls the dice and receives a 7, therefore successfully dispensing smoke. Since the Panzer's crew is exposed, there is no DRM to apply here. The German player then places a plus 2 smoke counter in F4. Keep in mind, if the German had failed to dispense smoke, this would not have cost them the one movement point. You only pay if you succeed. The German player then buttons up the tank, removing the crew exposed counter, and spends five movement points to enter G5. This is one movement point for entering open ground, and four movement points for crossing a crest line into higher terrain. During its movement, it also changes its turret covered arc to the hex bind between F4 and G4. It then spends one movement point to stop, with its remaining half movement point spent as a delay. Now, this whole time the Russian tank has not done anything. This is because the orchards along the road are in season from April to October, and the tanks cannot see each other until the Panzer reaches hex G5. Then the Russian tank changes its turret covered arc to the hex spine between E4 and F3 and fires. Now let's move to the second part of our example and look at the to hit to kill procedure. Let's assume the role of the Russian player and walk through the to hit procedure for the Russian KV-1 M41 tank. In step one, we need to declare to our opponent the target we're firing on, which in this case is the Panzer 3N in hex G5. For step two, declare the target type, we're going to use the vehicle target type. And in step three, determine the range, our target is three hexes away. Then in step four, we need to find the to hit number. To accomplish this, we locate our main armament on the to hit chart. The nationality is Russian and the gun type is 76L. We're using the vehicle target type, so I'm only going to show that section on the screen. As we said before, the range of the target is three hexes, which falls into the one to six column and gives us a to hit number of 10. Looking at the header, we also note that the critical hit number is two. Next, in step five, we look for any fire base to hit dice roll modifiers. There are two cases relevant to this example. The first is case eight for the Russian turret covered arc change. The Russian tank counter has a thick square bordering it which means a restricted slow traverse turret. Per the rules, we use the ST row in case eight since it falls under slow traverse. Now, we only change one hex spine and thus receive a plus two DRM for this. Next, the Russian tank is buttoned up, so we trigger case 13 and receive a plus one DRM. Therefore, our total DRMs for this section are plus three. Now we're at step six and we need to check for dice roll modifiers in the target base to hit DRM section. There are two cases here as well. The first is case 18 for hindrance. This is because our shot passes through the smoke in hex F4. After that is case 24 since the tank is firing at a moving vehicle. When the German tank entered hex G5, it spent 6.5 movement points which is well above the three or more movement points spent for a plus two DRM. Therefore, our total DRM for this section is a plus four. And our total DRMs for both sections will equal plus seven. 
Now it's step 7 and it's time for the Russian player to roll 2 dice. He does so and his white die result is a 2 and his red die result is a 1. Then it's time for step 8, resolve the result. Adding the die results to the DRM gives him a final result of 10 versus the to hit number of 10 scores him a hit. Now with a hit, we proceed to step 9. When determining the result of a hit on vehicles with turrets, we need to compare the red die result and the white die result. Whichever of these is larger will indicate whether this hit strikes the turret or the hull. The white die result is a 2, which is higher than the red die result of 1, so this hits the German tank in the turret. Now that we know that the turret is hit, we move on to step 10 and see which armor factor was hit. To determine this, we need to look at the turret's facing, not the vehicle's facing. And, and we can see that the shot entered through the turret's front facing hexes. Therefore, we will use the front armor factor for the next step. A quick observation before we move on to the to kill section. If the red die result had been higher than the white die result, the German tank's hull would have been hit. Then we would have checked the vehicle facing and then determined that the shot had come through one of the German tank's rear facing arcs and thus impacted the rear armor factor instead. Now that the Russian tank has scored a hit, the Russian player needs to determine if they've killed it. So let's walk through the to kill procedure beginning with step one where we must determine the to kill number. Now, in our situation, no special ammo was called out by the Russian player, so the default ammunition type is used for the target type. We're using a vehicle target type, so the default ammunition is armor piercing, or AP. Once again, I'm going to carve out the section of the armor piercing to kill table to save space. The range to the target is three hexes, so this falls within the 3 to 6 range column. We're using the default AP ammo, so the to kill number is 13. If we use APCR ammo, then the to kill number would be the second number in parentheses, which is 15. In the second step, we add any to kill number modifiers. Neither apply to this situation, but the list only has two modifiers. The first case is for a rear facing hit where you add a plus one to the to kill number. And if there is a critical hit, the to kill number is multiplied by two. But neither of these apply to this situation. For the next step, we need the armor factor where the hit was made. The shot hit the front facing of the turret. So we reference the German Panzer's front armor factor, which is six. After that, we subtract the armor factor number of 6 from our to kill number of 13 to get our final to kill number of 7. This is the number the Russian player will roll against to see if they get a kill. In step 5, the Russian player rolls 2 dice. The white die result is a 4 and the red die result is a 4. There are no DRMs, so our final result is 8. This is versus the final to kill number of 7. So we take this and in step 6 we resolve the result with the AFV destruction table. When the final result is 1 above the final to kill number and the ammunition is not high explosive, the last row on the AFV destruction table is used. The result of this attack is not a kill but there is a possible shock to the tank's crew. To resolve this, the German player must make a normal morale check for the tank crew. The tank crew's morale is an 8 as shown on a German crew counter. Then the German player rolls a 5 and they pass their morale check thus avoiding a shock outcome. As a last step, we place an acquired target counter on the German Panzer. Then, the Russian player declares they will intensive fire on the KV-1 M41, which means another walkthrough of the to hit procedure. Now, all of our information for steps 1 through 4 are the same. We're still shooting at the Panzer 3N, using the vehicle target type, 3 hexes away, and the to hit number is still 10. 
However, we have a slight change to some of our DRMs. In step 5, Firebase DRMs, we no longer have a DRM for changing our turret covered arc. However, we've essentially replaced it with Case 9, a plus 2 DRM for intensive fire. So our total DRMs for this section is plus 3. In step 6, our target based DRMs, we keep Case 18 for the plus 2 for smoke hindrance and Case 24 plus 2 for the moving vehicle. However, we also now have Case 20 since the German tank is an acquired target from firing on it last time. This gives us a negative 1, so the total DRMs for this section are also plus 3. Then in step 7, the Russian player rolls the dice. The white die result is a 2, and the red die result is a 2. In step 8, resolve the result, our dice result of 4 plus our DRM of 6 equals 10 versus the to hit number of 10 equals a hit. Now that we have a hit, in step 9 we determine the hit location. The white die result is 2 and the red die result is 2. When it is tied, it is the red result for a whole hit. Then in step 10, for the armor factor that is hit, it is the hull's rear armor factor since the shot came through the vehicle covered arc's rear two hexes. Now let's see if we have a kill here. Well, we're back already to the to kill procedure, so let's run through this again. For step 1, our to kill number is still 13. For step 2 though, there is a to kill modifier we add a plus one to the to kill number for a rear facing hit. So our to kill number will increase to 14. Then in step three, we determine our armor factor to subtract. This time it's the rear armor factor of three. Therefore, in step four, we subtract the armor factor and add the plus one DRM and our final to kill number is 11. Then in step 5, the Russian player rolls two dice. The white die result is 5 and the red die result is 6 for a total of 11. In step 6, resolve the result. We have a final result of 11 versus a final to kill number of 11. On the AFV destruction table, when the final result equals the to kill number, the tank is immobilized and the crew is shocked. And with intensive fire completed for this example, this is a good place to stop for this episode. In the next episode of this series, we will continue to learn the capabilities of armored fighting vehicles. So, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon for notifications so you'll be informed when the next episode becomes available. If you found this video helpful, please give me a like and share with your friends. To be the first notified when the next episode of Harsh Rules becomes available, please hit the bell icon for notifications. And as always, this is Ben Harsh for Harsh Rules. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.